The Rhyming Rabbit by Julia Donaldson and Linda Monks. The Rhyming Rabbit was sitting with his family in a grassy field. All the other rabbits were eating the grass, but the Rhyming Rabbit was making up a poem about it. Grass is growing all around, it makes a lovely swishing sound. It looks so green, it smells so sweet, and best of all, it's good to eat. Stop rhyming. Start eating, said the other rabbits. It was beginning to get dark when one of the rabbits pricked up his ears and stamped his foot. Fox! he shouted. Straight away all the rabbits ran to the burrow, all except the rhyming rabbit, who closed his eyes and made up a poem about the fox. Oh fearful fox, rusty red, you fill the rabbit's hearts with dread. So silently you crouch and sniff, until you catch our rabbit's whiff. So hungrily, you cunning beast, you stalk your tasty rabbit feast. You're sly and crafty through and through, but we can run as fast as you. Don't rhyme, run, yelled the other rabbits. The rhyming rabbit opened his eyes, saw the fox and ran as fast as he could to the burrow and just made it in time. It was night time and all the rabbits were snuggled up in the burrow together. All except the rhyming rabbit, who was sat apart from the other rabbits and started to sing a song. Sleep, rabbit, sleep, snuggle up and close your eyes and listen to my lullabies. Sleep, rabbit, sleep, dream, rabbit, dream of grassy fields and sunny hours and cabbages and cauliflowers. Dream, rabbit, dream. Stop singing and go to sleep, said the other rabbits. The rhyming rabbit felt sad and lonely. The other rabbits were all snoring, but he couldn't get to sleep. The other rabbits do nothing but moan. I'm going to go off on my own, he said to himself, and he started to dig. He dug a long tunnel and to keep himself going, he made a short poem. Dig, dig, quick, quick, scrubble, scrubble, kick, kick. The tunnel led him up and down and round a corner where he met a worm. The rhyming rabbit stopped in his tracks and he made up a new poem. Wonderful worm deep in the soil, why do you wiggle and curl and coil? Where are you going? Where have you been? How do you manage to stay so clean? How do you change your shape like that? From long and skinny to short and fat. And one more thing that's bothering me, how do you bear to eat earth for tea? But the worm said nothing. He had no ears, so he couldn't hear the poem. Round the next corner, the rhyming rabbit met a mole. The mole's eyes were very small, but he did have ears. Maybe he would enjoy a spot of poetry. The rhyming rabbit stood on his hind legs and began to recite. Marvellous mole, as black as coal, with shoveling toes and pointy nose. You snuffle around beneath the ground. You're practically blind, but never mind. At least you can hear. So lend an ear and hear when I say moles rule okay. Be quiet, said the mole. I'm looking for worms. The rhyming rabbit felt very lonely, but he carried on digging and he dug and he dug until he met a centipede. Straight away he thought of his best poem yet. Oh centipede with a hundred legs, supposing you laid a hundred eggs. And supposing the baby centipedes had a hundred legs like their mum and dad, how many legs would that be? And suppose the baby centipedes grew and they each laid a hundred eggs like you. And all of the new little sisters and brothers had just the same number of legs as the others. How many legs would that be? Oh, be quiet, said the centipede. I don't like sums. The rhyming rabbit felt sadder and lonelier than ever. And he felt hungry too. He dug his way up out of the earth and into the open air and found himself on a hill. The grass was covered in dew and it tasted delicious. 
the rhyming rabbit ate and ate until he felt better. Then he gazed up at this night sky and made up a new poem. Oh, midnight blue and velvet sky, oh, silent stars so bright and high, oh, yellow moon so clear and full that shines on trees and grass and, and, and... The rhyming rabbit couldn't think of a rhyme for full. He stopped and he scratched his head. Whoa, said a voice. The rhyming rabbit turned round and saw a woolly sheep standing beside him. Oh, thank you, sheep. You found a rhyme, he said. And the sheep replied, I make up poems all the time. Another poet. The rhyming rabbit stared in wonder. Before he could think of a rhyming reply, the sheep went on. How nice it is to meet a rabbit with whom to share my rhyming habit. The rhyming rabbit felt so happy that he decided to make up a poem for the sheep. Oh, pretty and poetic sheep who stands upon the hill so steep with handsome horns and woolly fleece, as white as snow, or clouds, or, or, or... Yes, suggested the sheep. She smiled at the rabbit and added, Shall I make up a poem for you? Oh, yes, I pray you, sheep, please do, replied the rhyming rabbit. So the sheep cleared her throat and recited an old rabbit can dig an old rabbit can feed but a rabbit who knows how to make up poems is a special rabbit indeed an old rabbit can run an old rabbit can sleep but only a very special rabbit could make up poems with a sheep the rhyming rabbit sighed happily. The sun came up and it was a beautiful day. The rhyming rabbit and the sheep stayed together all day making up poems about the sun and the flowers and the trees. As evening fell and the shadows grew long, the rhyming rabbit remembered his family back in the burrow and he said to the sheep, the others must be getting worried. Goodbye, dear friend. It's time I hurried. The sheep looked very sad and said, You go? Oh, no. Oh, whoa. Oh, sorrow. But the rhyming rabbit said, I'll come back again tomorrow. The end. Oh, what a lovely story that was. I'm so glad the rhyming rabbit found a friend to rhyme with. Did you spot any rhyming words, children? <laughs>